So the next series is going to be a multi-part series showing you how I build a trestle style table. And this table will actually have extensions on either end of the table. As I've mentioned um, in past videos, I, unless I really, really have to, I do not prefer splitting the top and having the top extend off the base. So a more popular design, especially for trestle tables, is to add the extensions to the end. So that was a lot of engineering and because this is going down south, um, humidity is going to be an issue. Luckily, I uh, finished this build up in the summer, so it's fairly humid up here as well. But if I was building something like this in the winter time, um, transporting it down south to where it's, it's quite humid, you really have to pay a lot of attention to, to your lumber because it is going to uh, expand quite substantially. So all those considerations I took into place uh, when designing this build. But like I said, the first series, which if you watch the channel you've already seen, is the bench. The bench matches the style of, of the table. The table trestles are all made out of reclaimed oak, but the top is newer red oak because I didn't have enough of the older lumber, but the top was left fairly rustic, so it should match the base really well instead of taking it down to that red oak. So I haven't fully edited the entirety of these videos, so I don't know exactly how many parts the table itself will be, I'm guessing at least three or four. And like I said in the original video, um, bear with me because this table was um, ordered by my sister and my brother-in-law before COVID. So I've actually had it kicking around the shop for about a year and a half um, because the original timeline to get it made and delivered down there obviously went up in smoke once things, once COVID really started to get bad, especially since she's a nurse down in New Orleans. So finding the older footage and editing it hasn't necessarily been a task. It's more so it's funny how much you forget about your decision making process when a year and a half goes by. But um, this video has been edited and then this um, it will go up after the bench video. And like I said, this is probably easily top five, one of my favorite pieces of furniture I've made. Their style matches my style pretty well. So it's always easier to make stuff for people when it's, um, when it's consistent with your sort of style. Um, and that's it. So this is the basic style of the trestle portion of the table. My top won't be as thick as this, but this is kind of the rough design I'm going off of. So what I like to do, I'll make a rough scale on the photo. So this top portion is about a half inch. The bottom portion in the photo, even though it's kind of a weird perspective, is also a half inch, which leaves my middle section at 1.5. So then I could, um, blow up these numbers for the middle section it's um, going to be like a 3 to 1 ratio so 0.5 and 0.5 are the bottom then times 3 will get you the middle section so since I'm working at getting it to be 28 inches because tables kitchen tables can range between 20 and 30 inches so if I make it 28 I have a little bit of flexibility on the size of the top I can make it up to 2 inches thick so I broke down my numbers a little differently. I could have done 6, 6, and 16, but I think I'm going to do 5, 5, and 18. So that will give me rough measurements, which will eventually get me a look quite similar to this, just with scaling things up off of a ruler. So a while ago, a guy approached me about making him a cutting board, and we bartered, and he gave me a bunch of these thick, um, old beams. This one happened to be white oak. I was saving it. Not The other ones aren't necessarily not nice. They're mostly pine or fir, but this oak one's a pretty rare piece of lumber, and I wanted to save it for a special project. So this is what I used it for, and my sister and my brother-in-law style um, is very similar to mine, which made building this much more enjoyable and easier because decisions that had to be made, I usually trusted my own instincts, and they were cool with them. So as you can see, I'm just cutting down this rather large beam in half, and then I'll cut it again. Um, this chainsaw needs a new chain as well as a new bar, but I was able to get pretty, pretty nice cuts out of it. So there's the first piece cut in half. 
it's been long enough I can't remember the original dimensions of the beam and then I'm just using a hand planer to even out some of those uh, cuts cut marks from the chainsaw so then I could cut it again and ironically enough I broke this hand planer in the shop uh, a day or two ago about a year and a half after after filming this so once I had that done, I, you could see I'm cutting again. I'll cut the other one as well. And this is just rough cutting this beam down to size. This beam ended up making pretty much the entire rough base uh, for the table. So it went very far with, with the lumber I have. You can see the kerf on this one wasn't as clean, but once again, it doesn't really matter because some of the chainsaw marks I actually kept in there kind of added to the character of the table. So these are the two main chunks I'm going to be working with to make all the top pieces of the trestle as well as the middle sections. So from this material I'll start roughing it down to, to size. You can see I just have my saw. Pretty simple work. Um, I believe these are the middle portions I'm cutting at first and then I'll cut down because I'm going to need four tops and four bottoms. This material, um, with the material I had, I couldn't get as tall as I wanted to. So it was about two inches short of the ideal height for the table, even when the top was added. So you'll see later in the video, I do add a piece to the bottom of this trestle, which actually ended up looking pretty nice. So then for the tops and the bottoms, I'm using my jointing jig to get straight edges. You can see I could send it through the jointing jig a couple times and reference it off of that piece of melamine to make sure it's straight. I don't use this jig as much anymore. It probably needs to be remade. It's one of those jigs that after you use it um, for a year or so, it kind of gets out of square and needs to be remade. So I have other ways of, of jointing material, but if you want a jig like that, it does work pretty well with some finagling in order to get straight edges on lumber. So then for the middle sections, I'm going to be putting them into fairly large mortises. So I'm cutting some curves on the tops and bottoms to make some tenons. As I always say, there's easier and faster ways to do this, but the radial arm saw works for me and that's usually what I choose to do. So you can see with the tenons cut on that. I'm now going to start making the decorative element. You could see in the first photo that this side piece is, is pretty similar to the side piece um, from the photo that they originally sent over. I kind of uh, reverse engineered it in order to get the measurements and I'm using the table saw to cut this square section in the middle first just because my jigsaw is not that great. I really need to get a new one and um, the curve cuts while well, it takes a little bit more time you can see I can remove all those pieces of lumber will give me a nice flat reference spot so I don't have to spend a ton of time sanding um, a crooked jigsaw mark. This lumber is almost uh, two inches thick as well so cutting through it with a jigsaw is a pain even even with uh, a decent jigsaw. And then the edges of this are, are curved up to the top part so that I am actually doing with a jigsaw and then I could clean it up with uh, a belt sander later. So just cutting those edges off. So for the bottoms, they also have are a little decorative. They're going to be angled as well as have a, a half circle cut out of them. I'm going to be cutting this on the radial arm saw. You can see you could raise the blade and make sure that the saw tracks at the exact angle you want. I just have a piece of wood screwed to the tabletop in order to get that angle and this whole thing's clamped into place. Now like I said, this is very thick lumber. These are over around two, a little over two inches thick, these bottom braces. So I went through it in a series of cuts going through it all at once. The radial arm saw would probably bog down and catch. So then in order to cut out these half circles, I'm just using um, a hole saw. I have this braced against my body and I can just angle it out of there. And that's, uh, I remember, it's, it's funny, I don't keep a diary, but it's funny watching these old videos or even my older videos in general, seeing all the old projects in there. That was Carol's cabinet, which was also not a super fun project. So then I actually created this jig in order to cut butterflies. It basically uh, utilizes two bushings and the offset is perfect. So one bushing will cut the negative and the other bushing will cut a positive and the offset is perfect. So they match up and go into place. Now I don't mind doing dovetails by hand, but this was pretty old white oak and there was lots of checks and cracks in it. I think I ended up cutting 
14 butterflies just for the base alone. So I made this jig in order to save time. And making the jig didn't necessarily save time, but I still use it. It still works pretty well. And it really cuts a variety of sizes for those butterflies um, and very quickly once you have the jig. So that was obviously cutting the negative. So now I could go through and change the bushing and cut the positive. Um, and if you're interested in this jig, I do have it on my channel. It's probably um, at least a year old at this point. So you might have to go back pretty far to find it if you are interested in it. So there's the piece. And then I could just cut those, cut those pieces out on the table saw. They'll pop right out. And then that's how I have my keys. So there's a little bit of cleanup to do on these as well as the negative, but you could see they fit into place very well. And like I said, I had so many to cut. Once I had the jig made, it was very, very quick work. Now these are red oak. I didn't have white oak to do to uh, do this, but they don't really stand out too much. Red oak and white oak are different. They're a little bit different color, but once it's finished and everything, and the butterflies, I kind of cheated to the inside of the table. You can't really tell the difference. So then for the base, I'm sinking that large tenon in there. So to cut the mortise, I'm removing the bulk of the material with a spade bit. This is an inch and a half spade bit. This is a very, very big mortise. Um, I think it goes down at least another inch and a half. And then I could transfer this over to the mortising jig and then square up all of my sides. This is much faster than cutting. I would have probably had to cut three or four rows of mortises in order to get all of that material out. So removing the bulk of it with the spade bit just saves so much time. And then that's what that looks like. A little bit of hand chiseling to clean everything up. And then these two fist pieces fit together quite nicely. This one slid, slid into place really well. So that's going to be the end of this video, just the, the main trestle build. Like I said, I don't know exactly how many parts this is going to be yet because it was a pretty extensive build. But before I put finish on them, this is what those actual finished trestles look like. So there is a little bit more work to do on them, but um, you could see just how they turned out. I needed a little bit of a riser on the bottom, which I'll show you how I add that. But once all the uh, butterflies were sanded down, everything looked pretty good.